የቀያያ የኽስቲኒ ተከት ዮሐን ግንልቺሽ ወጪን ኸስቲ ያኻና ዘንቲቂ ሂኒ ያቅቋን አንካህ ወንቀኒን ስለዚ አያ ሀጂ ታወቲ ያቁቲ ሄሽዋሳ ከቆቲ ኡ ኡ ዮሐን ያኽትዎስኩ ይስኩ ታኽኩነህ ስለዚ አያ ሀስቁስቲ ጫቁ ከይደሂ ናያ የሃ ያውሰቃ ወ ሳንቲ ወሳንክ ከልቃጂት ጉኺ ከልቃልቃው ወሳ ከትሮክ ከያት ሳይ ሂሻን ኸት ዋልተር ሶብላ ፎይ ከልቃኺ ናኻ የኤወ አጃክቲ አጃክቲ የኤወ ግንልቺሽ ايه يا وسقاط اك اك تخ نخي قصي ات ايا لكت يتلين قدامي كا واساش زي يا هاس قصتي هاوس نخ قا هاس وس نخ يقتامي يا اوي اك اوي اداته وي يا نقيجن يا قاجقته كل شيء شهيد دشي Ekha uh, it's great to see everybody. I'm happy we're together. Um uh, sometimes on Akwan land uh the weather gives us a hard time. Uh but we'll be okay. Uh Walter Sobolov used to say a long time ago it was really cold, like colder than now. And it was just really difficult for people to survive. and our language was something that allowed them to do so. So uh I guess for starters just kind of slow rolling back into our habits and processes. Anybody got any language stuff you were thinking about, you want to ask about? Uh I've got a I've got a plan for this evening, but I thought I'd open it up for thoughts and questions. Um I have a question just in regards to it doesn't have to be tonight but I was wondering if there could be a certain point that we could work in how to create uh singet songs and how vocables work with that cuz um it's been something that I've been trying to do and it's a little bit hard cuz I don't have the basis of knowledge and I try to say it like how you'd say it in singet and it doesn't always say good sound good in a song Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Maybe we could do some of that on uh Thursday. I'll gather a few things like and, and just sort of we'll examine some songs as well and look at patterns and vocables. I I think in the songs you'll see one of the similarities to a lot of things in Tlingit, which is it's a lot simpler than it used to be just in terms of what people are making nowadays. But I, I, that doesn't mean it'll stay that way i think we're in this kind of reconstruction phase both with our language and our songs and a lot of times with our art as well like there is probably you go back far enough and there are more people making higher quality stuff than now uh although now you do have people who are making stuff that just blows the roof off of things and you also have wonderful think it speeches like and I've been present for a lot of these speeches where and I remember there I've been in these points of my language journey where I'll hear someone say something and I'll say I don't know if I understood all of it but I know something amazing just happened you know in terms of what they what they put together so a couple things with the songs is um I'll I'll put together some examples I'll see if I can get it by Thursday but we might bump it to next Tuesday But what we'll do is we'll examine some of the basic structures of the main types of songs and then we'll also look at sort of like what goes into the language. Uh and what's really interesting is there's a lot of sad stuff in the joyous songs. So it's it's like uh Klinge would be good at like composing country songs or blues songs. Like we probably just pick that right up. Like, oh yeah. Cuz a lot of these songs, you know, it's all upbeat you know and it's, but then you look, look at the words like let me look at you one last time before i die 
Oh my God, yeah, there's a click it, or there's a Club One Con song that's about, it was written during Anxa and it was about like a love goodbye to our land. That shit is yeah. just so heartbreaking. Yeah, and so just the Tawu uh, Kawawachi, this really broken spirit. And so we do, we certainly have that kind of stuff. But then there's also things with the pattern too, like in terms of what you see. And then it generally just throws tone and vowel length kind of out the window. And, and so things just fit the melody. But that's another thing you'll have to sort of figure out. And then uh, hundreds and hundreds there's so many songs there's so many songs and so our our goal should be learning as many of the old ones as we can and then as as we gain an understanding to start making new ones because that that's a living culture a living language uh, and then yeah if if you folks want to pull together some examples of songs that you know oh we could do just a big song sharing thing it'd be so fun and uh, you could play a tape, you could do whatever. And then uh, if it's if it's real, I don't know, we'll see how sensitive it gets because there's also cry songs and then there's uh, what we call yek uti, which is a spirit imitation. And sometimes those ones might be something, we might end up with a class that uh, we put in a private folder instead of putting it out there for everybody. Uh, they used to, and I think what we'll do is we're going to couple this with over the course of the semester, we're going to take a look at a series of speeches that were given at a meeting in uh, 1981 because celebration is coming up. The 40 year anniversary, it's happening. And uh, it's the 40 year anniversary. So I want us to study all the speeches that launched the first celebration ever. And it was a gathering in Sitka. And so but in there, they talk about, because probably before that, there are certain songs like Yek uh, Uti and some hat songs and stuff where you never sang them outside of a kui. And so now they were singing them in public. And as they brought them out to public, they were sort of talking on uh, about some of these changes. But some of these changes take place because if you're losing everything, then sometimes you go to adjust what you're doing to make sure that you can hold on to something. So uh, it might be one that's, well, I think we should give ourselves at least a week. And so we won't do it Thursday, but we'll do it Tuesday. And it might be a two-part series. We'll see. And uh, it unfortunately, probably won't be available for the whole public, but we'll, we'll see. We might be able to just, maybe by not doing an analysis of any of the sensitive, more sacred songs. Um, the other ones, we call them uh, is the name of the song that usually has children of the clan. So um, if you're composing the song in your Dakhlawidi, then you'd usually put Dakhlawidi Yetki in the first verse. And then you might end up with Yanyedi Yetki in the second verse. Or it's very common that you'll have two different clans that are very close in terms of their relationships. Like out of the Chilkat and Khut area, you had a lot of songs that would say and then because we lived right next to each other and would share a lot of the same uh, you know, relatives. And so uh, we'll talk about how those are put together. Those, those are really fun too. And then sort of like start giving us some structures on how to Start making our own because it's important to make make our own songs. Cheesh. Gonna cheesh. I'm super excited. Okay. Anyone else? Any other thoughts? Questions? Requests? Semester requests? The request lines are now open. And they're always open. So. Um, I was thinking just because I am struggling with the verbs, like if there was a way when we're here to practice one verb and like, I don't know if we can do it on Zoom where 
you know, maybe this means they, or I saw you do like two fingers is plural, one is singular. And so if we do this, <laughs> it means we say they and you and you plural, and maybe just like practicing saying it to each other or asking um, just to practice the, the idea of a dialogue and, and conjugating a verb that's often used. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I, I think this semester, um, you know, we got pretty far last semester. We're going to sort of do a bit of review and dip into the beginning Klingit workbook, some of the later chapters to sort of springboard us into a few other things. But we are going to get to this point where I'm going to sort of put up the English for a verb, like say, like, uh, I heard you, uh, like walking around. Um, and so I'll say, I heard you. I heard y'all, I heard them, I heard them all, you heard me. You know, and so we'll just do that where like you're just changing the object and the subject. And you'll have the English and you'll have a chance to make a prediction. And it's okay if it's off because, you know, now Zoom won't break. Uh, and, and so it'll be fine. And then, uh, and then we'll just show you what it looks like, right? And so, but I think doing that helps just to do this sort of start turning the thing at wheels in your mind to sort of start shifting these things so that when you can use them, uh, you can. And then this semester, we're going to do a few other activities as well, where it's like advanced Linga is going to do this as well, where I'm going to break into groups and we're going to make a dialogue about something where. Um, so I'll give you a scenario, like, for example, the one I was thinking of today, which we won't do today. We'll, We'll work our way up to it, but you'll break into maybe like probably two groups and then create a dialogue between two fictional people. For example, one would be someone's upset because their car broke down and then their friend is talking about how to rearrange their schedule so they can help drive them around. Right. And so like that's, but it's not going to have a lot of specifics. It's just going to be like, here's this scenario. Now go be creative and figure out. And we might come back and say, well, we wanted to say this, but we couldn't quite figure out how to do these things. And then we'll sort of go through it and sort of work on it together. Uh, and then the driving sort of larger frameworks is from a perspective of looking at language to analyze is we're going to use some of the speeches from Hatu Naku Yis, uh, which is actually from the uh, we, Because We Cherish You, uh, which is we'll take a look at that text. And we'll look at some of the speeches in there. And we're going to listen to a kind of a fusion version of George Davis in particular. But I'm going to show you folks where the recordings are for all of those speeches so you can listen to them. So that's going to be the thing that's sort of already translated for us that we're going to use as examples of how to do oratory. And then we're going to look at a story by Cyril George and just go through and practice our listening and writing it down. And then. Um, I am excited. I'm going to show you folks something. Uh, I, every now and then I, I get a project idea and then I just dive in for like 30 hours and try and finish it. And I did that over this long weekend uh, with a board game, which I, I'm making. It's going to be a thing at verb board game. So it's dedicated to all of the. We came up with a word for nerd. Not to be, I'm not making fun of anybody, uh, but we were in Hawaii and we were nerding out on language. We were just really having fun with it. And so we asked uh, one of our kumu over there, how do you say, what do you say for nerd in Hawaiian? And so he came up with bookworm in Hawaiian, which is punipuke. And so uh, once we figured that out, we're like, oh, that's so cute. And so, kuk tutuk would be bookworm and Tlingits. And so this is for the bookworms. Uh, but I think it's also going to help a lot of folks. So basically, you're going to have this board, um, which is just sort of just there. But these, these are the main components of a verb. Like if you can figure out all these things, like you've got the verb. But the, the last, last part is going to be how everything smushes together. But just in terms of like, here's these areas of the verb and down here are the most common things. So when you get to like the thematic and the pre-verb, 
and the, the post work. There's some other things that could be there, but I think they're more unusual. So I think if you can figure out all of these things here, then you got it. You know, this is, this is the key. Uh, and so then, so like there's these areas, and what we'll do is we'll also take some time this semester and you'll know what every single one of these things are. And some of them have meaning and some of them have function. And then you'll know which ones are which. Uh, and so basically as you go through, like this list just shows you sort of the things that are there. There's an accompanying document that'll sort of say, just give a quick explanation of what all these things are. And then there'll be these little tiles. And so these little tiles, and so you could put that together and you can sort of construct your own verb or take a look at a verb and then sort of diagnose what the parts are that are in there. And so uh, it'll be fun. It's probably like a month away. Like I've got to, I had to order a proof and then it'll send it to me. And as long as it looks okay, then it'll go live. And, and so it's, it's kind of exciting. And I'm going to try and think of other kind of interactive things that we can do with this. And then the last class we went over uh, these verbs. So like trying to take a look at the yati verb and the city verb, which are, they, sh they come from the same verb root. And this is to be, and this is to be one of those things, right? So they're a little bit different. So here we see a zero classifier just to be a certain way. We see the S classifier to say we're we're creating a category. It means to be one of these things, to be a teacher, to be a speaker, to be of a certain clan, to be of a certain quality, like a, you, could, you could be like a firefighter, or you could be uh, an alcoholic, or you could be, you know, whatever, a liar, and then you could, any of those would fit for this verb. Uh, and then it's sort of saying imperfective, perfective, future, habitual, command, and prohibitive. So is, was, or became, will be, always is, be that way, don't be that way. And so then you see, um, basically we kind of sort of talked about this. So here, uh, to compare them, you've got yeyeti, and then, uh, I'll just say at, so to be something. Atchsiti, yewuti, atchwusiti, yekwati, atchkuchsiti, yena teach, atchnas teach, ye inati, atchinsati, kish ye itik, kish atchu isti kik. So the prohibitive one is the one that's most different between the two. For the others, like the classifier is changing, uh, but most of the parts are there. But yekwati and guhsati are different. By the end of the semester, you should be able to sort of know some of the reasons why that is. But then this middle column shows you the things that are there. So this is the object, this is the classifier, this is the root. This is the object, it's the perfective marker, classifier, root, object, g conjugation, u uh, irrealis, what we call it irrealis, g mode, classifier, uh, and then the root, object, n conjugation marker, classifier, root, ch suffix. This is the object. It's, it's a second person singular, the na conjugation classifier and the root. And then here, uh, this doesn't have what's in the preverb. It just focuses on the verb itself. So here you've got same thing, second person object, irrealis classifier, root, and then the prohibitive marker. So this underlined K is how we say don't. So I just want just wanted to see that because we're also going to start sort of pulling some things apart, seeing what's in there, giving you some verbs, saying what's in there, and then sharing, you know, seeing what we came up with together and making sure we're getting really good at spotting those components that are there 
the idea is sort of like we're going to learn how to take it apart so that we can put it together and be able to sort of eventually do it kind of just off the cuff. Any thoughts on that? Clinic. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. What is the, um, for the future, is that ga and qa? Is that like the same ga, qa, na, and zero? And you're just using two of them, or? So these three, so there's, there's this spot. Um, so here's the object. Here's the thematic. So any of the ka, tu, ya, ka, all those things are basically nouns you could put onto a verb. And then here is where you get the conjugation. This is where most of the verb is going to change when you start going future, perfective, any of that stuff, is there's going to be some things that need to activate right here. And it's sort of like if you put them in a, it's like a, it's almost like a combination lock. You know, so if you activate this one and this one and this one, now you get future. And so there's certain combinations that have to be activated in order to move it into a certain mode. And for the future, you have to have ga, u, and ka. It doesn't really matter. This is one of the cases where, like, it doesn't matter what it means. It just matters what it does. So once you put those three things in combination, you always have a future verb. And a future verb must always have those three things. And is that, because I know you do that, um, oh, the gambling wheel, you know, where like if you if you use that, if you've already used that slot, nothing else will fit. So that's why I was confused with conjugation because there's ga and ka. So I figured, okay, if ga is already being used, then ka, na, or the zero can't be used. But in future, just let that go. That's not the case. There's no spinning yeah. wheel. <laughs> when you get to the verb, um, this is another visual that I made. I like old analog audio gear. So then I found like these little switches and, and I sort of made this thing. So like this is the verb conjugation switchboard. And I do have one student I work with who hates this thing just because when, when they see it, they get like all tense, you know. But basically, this is a little bit more of a complicated concept than, you know, like when we start to introduce these ideas, I, I like the idea of the, the slot machine, like here's this thing, there can be one thing, here's this thing, there could be. And this is the same kind of concept, but it's extended. So when you get, when you like put suffixes on a noun, you could have like sort of two and maybe three things on there and that that's it you're out of room and so there that kind of simple metaphor works for a verb you could have something activated for all of these switches and this one does not include stem variation it just gets us up to the stem so i guess the stem variation would be the magical final switch that you could throw on here so when we look at there's a bunch of stuff, and basically, if you start here on the top, this is the left side of the verb, the front, the first thing you say or hear, and then you start getting into the verb itself, like here's the object pronoun, right? So here, you could turn this wheel and you're getting first person singular, plural, second person singular, plural, third person, fourth human, fourth non-human. Uh, there's a couple other ones proximal, partitive, reflexive, which don't worry about those too much right now. Uh, and then you get into the, the thematic prefixes. You can have up to three of them. I don't think you can have more. So, and these all have meaning, right? So uh, they, they all have some sort of meaning. A couple of them might have just function over meaning, but you know, so a, a horizontal surface, a mouth, a voice, those types of things. And then um, there is this thing you can add. We're not going to worry about that right now to say, like, I did it for myself. But then we're going to get down here to these four spots. So there are four spots where conjugation stuff can happen. Okay, so here you have ga. So that one is, needs to turn on. For the future, you have to turn this switch. The irrealis does have meaning. It basically says there's something not real about the verb. 
So this one activates any time there's a negative, any time there's a future, because it hasn't happened. But you're saying, well, it's go even if it's going to, it hasn't right now. And Kling gets always focused on whether or not it has happened. So that one turns on, this one turns on, and then this one over here turns on to the qah mode. So within here, you have, it's, it gets, uh, this is where it gets a little murky, is you have these four things we've talked about, the, the conjugation type of the verb. You got a ga verb, like you say, ika ke, be good. You've got a zero verb, ha, eat it. You've got a ka verb, um, you could say kanu, uh, right, for sit down. And then you have a na verb, adenagu, or nata, right? And so you could tell in the command form which one it is. But it can have any of those four, and it can also have this separate ka mode. And so this one is not associated with that conjugation type. And then there's this other thing where sometimes it is a conjugation type, but then this na just gets activated for like ya na squing, getting to know it, ya na good. Like those are not na conjugation, it's just built into that verb mode. So there's a lot of things, but there's only, there's only four switches, but that means you do have a lot of combinations. But what we'll work on is which combinations are gonna get you which verb, starting with the perfective, and then doing the future. So, you so have, that, oh, go, sorry, go ahead. You can have a verb that has both a ga conjugation and a ga mode? Yes, because you could say, it's got them both. You hear ka, ka, right? And, and I think when you're first learning, you're like, okay, I got to remember that string of sounds. But as you go further, you're like, okay, bam, I, I see what those things are doing. And then, for example, you must have whatever conjugation it has and ka for the hortative. That's, that's how you get a hortative. You got to turn either this one or this one on, depending on what the conjugation type of the verb. Like, for example, na and qa, yain qa ti, let it be that way, right? So you got na and qa. Those two are required for the hortative. For the future, you got to have ga, u, and qa. So it's just, it's just sort of like figuring out, like, what's the pattern, and now how is this going to affect the prefix? Because once you add more things into the prefix, then you just get more contraction. So is so that PFV stands for perfective, correct? Yes. So the qa is basically has two little. I was going to say, oh, that's future, but it could also be hortative, which is like the future. So is qa sort of like the overarching for those two? Because you couldn't just say it's future; it could also be hortative. Is yeah. that what plus stands for? It's like future and hortative or no? Well, it does. It'll pop up in other things as well. Like, so it's just sort of like it's one extra step. And so I, I have to take a look. I know it's there for uh, if you're going to have any of the um, what, potentials. So you say, Kesh ade un kata ye. That I couldn't. I couldn't sleep, or if they couldn't sleep, so that's getting na and ka and the irrealis. That's helpful because now I can think even with the potential, it means it hasn't happened. It could happen, yeah. which means it would have to happen in the future. So like that ka is that mode is really about something that could happen down the road in the future, either as a hortative or as a potential. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to. That's helpful. That's helpful. And then my last question, just as I'm making uh, materials for my for my students, and are the colors that you're using on the game board, which I can't wait to look into, going to teach for doing that, are those the colors you're going to stick with? So, like, if I start, like. Are you going to uniform uh, make those uniform so that if if like any teacher wants to start making a sentence to help adults or kids begin to see that these are separate 
components. Then I'll start using, for suffix, I'll use that purple or light purple. And, you know, so that was my next question or my yeah. last. Yeah, and, and as I sort of figured out like what, and I'm always, every year I think of some new way to just try and like examine this stuff. But yes, I, I don't plan on changing the colors. I, I think I'm pretty set on these. I'm gonna go through my older presentations and materials and adopt them to show. And sometimes like for a beginning clink it, we're just probably just gonna show blue, red, and maybe that's it, maybe just gray, right? I mean, I don't even know. But it's interesting too, because I, I bet you if, if folks, if you folks come into a Tlingit, like just sit in on a beginning Tlingit language class five years from now, it's probably gonna be quite a bit different than how we teach it now, right? And so I had students who sat in on some of my beginning Tlingit classes just for fun. And they said, are oh, you already doing classifiers? We didn't do those till like year two, you know? And so, uh, just in terms of like, what do you show? And then how's, you know, for me, I, we kind of stage it through, but then if folks start asking questions of like, oh yeah, we could look at it. We'll take a look under the hood. And so, but yeah, it's, it's exciting. Cause then you, you'll start to see too, it's extremely predictable. What happens when you put these in a certain order? You know, there's, there's a lot to remember, but then what we'll do is we'll sort of look at the formula practice a whole bunch of versions of it and it'll it will start to click it will okay any other thoughts okay let me switch over to uh, the beginning clinket workbook so uh, Coming through here, we see like some, this is from Qashqabu, and we're gonna to listen to some of his, a little bit more of his language uh, after our break. I'm gonna just listen to it, practice listening, writing down what we're hearing. But in one particular instance, he said, 1922, <laughs> Ye ahu an hashkainen. Ye's kahu, ya school you e. So hut away kinder ain. Ya nahas, ya nahas And we go down and we can see the translation. In 1922, we knew then, uh, I'd probably say we already knew. So when you have day popping up right before a verb, it's like saying I art it already happened. Um, it was drifting out of our hands, our way of life, our language. Now when I looked at some of you young people that are going to school, it makes my head go up with pride. And so he said this to us, uh, well, he was visiting several of our language classes uh, that semester and then we had asked him, Kagwask, uh, Ishmael Hope, and I asked him, what do learners of Tlingit need to hear in order to stick with it, to feel inspired, to feel courage? And this is one chunk of a, of a larger speech that ended with, like he, and so you'll see, like those more you study Tlingit, and then you come back to these same speeches and same speeches, and then you just realize, what they're doing when they bring it up to their crescendo. So then what, we. Can... Uh, I'm just curious what uh, was happening in 1922. I mean, is there anything? I mean, it just seems that there must be some significance. Any guesses? Is that when we became U.S. citizens? That would be 1924. Was that when he was born? That's when he was born. He was 90, yeah, I think he was 92 when we recorded it, I can't remember. And so, yeah, it's wild to think about, like he was born before Native Americans were United States citizens. So when he was a baby, a Native American could not become a citizen of the United States of America. 
Well, that's also been nearly a hundred years. So yeah, he would have been a hundred years old this year. Well, it's time to get this, this language boat turned around and headed in the right direction. <laughs> so what this presents down here now, as we start to go back to these, like, look at these components, look at these components, day already, perfective marker, we, classifier, ku, to know. So now as we sort of keep examining what's under this, what's the underneath part? So it, we're, I'm starting to use angle brackets to show like, here's the conjugation stuff in these angle brackets, right? So here, this is perfective. And then here's the we, so that matches up to we, first person, plural, subject, capital S, subject marker, classifier, S classifier plus I. So that's how you know it's si. So we start marking that. What is it? It's an S I classifier, right? And it's sort of like starting to, we got to build these compartments in our brain, right? I got, I got mad because someone, someone took my classroom. I don't know if it was my classroom, but I'm usually in the next door classroom. And somebody took it this semester. I was writing some people about it and I was like, I said, are you in 108? And my colleague said, I'm a 460. And she was thinking of like the class number. And I was like, and I was like, wait, there's a fourth floor? And so anyways, we're gonna we'll build a language room somewhere on this campus. Then it'll be indigenous language only, but it's fine, I'll get kicked out. It's fine. Okay. But then so you're gonna build this like you're gonna build these compartments in your brain. And, and so it, this artificial part of language, we're going to have to balance this semester how much we're talking about, it, how much we're using it, talking about it, using it, talking about it, using it. But I want you to start seeing these components, right, and how it's getting put together. Deo tusaku awe. And this awe, it has meaning, but a lot of times it's kind of like a comma. It just gives you a little pause between subjects. Ha, our, ji nak. So, uh, this one is like, we either dropped it or it's getting removed. It kind of depends on what happens next. Uh, and then you get ya, na, hush. So here's the ya and the na are working together. So like this is where the conjugation starts and then it ends right there. And the, the object is stuck in the middle of it. But you gotta have ya and na to say like, it's something happening right now. Ya nagut, ya anasquen, ya anasquen. There'll be a whole bunch of them that you'll learn that have this ya and na. Uh, and then you'll also realize this ya sometimes is a k, sometimes is a ye. But it's predictable. Like when might it be k instead of ya? What do you think? Upward. Yes, if the verb is a ga conjugation verb. So you could say ke kwa ke. Uh, it's going to be better or ke na kain. It's improving. It's going to be ye if it's a ka conjugation. So k sounds, y sounds. K sounds, y sounds. K is upwards, ye is downwards. So you'd say ye, um, ye undergun. It's sun shining right now. Okay. And then we got uh, L classifier, so it pops up right there, and then hush. So if this just says L, that means the classifier is sh. But all that this is marking here is the group and whether there's an I or a D in there. Here's ha, our, kusti. This is a noun that comes from a verb. Kudziti would be how we say that verb usually to exist. Kusti is life. So hakusti, our life. Uh, this is actually short and high when it's a noun form. Okay. Uh, our yukatangi, another noun that comes from a verb. Ha yukatangi. 
And then you can see all the all the pieces in here, right? Mouth, classifier at zero, ton to communicate, and then you've got this K, which means repeatedly, but it's really linked to the U. So the U and the K are doing something there, and then the I, uh, because it's being owned. Yuchatunk would be word, communication, yuchatungi, our language. Or, you know, ha yuchatungi, yi yuchatungi, hastu yuchatungi. Yidet aya. So now it is yi ahu a. Some, like being among you all, or this could be some of you all. Like it, it kind of. There's some different things that are going on here. I'd probably say some of you all. A, na, chash, qe, nin. When I looked upon you, yis, nu, qaq, peoples, this school at, yu, i, su, uh, kind of like to you all. Khat owe, me though, or me, kinda, up going upwards, towards the upwards, kain, among, yan chasa ach, so I'm always, my head is always going up, right? Some big verbs and some big concepts in that particular speech. Oh, there goes the lights. Oh, that wasn't hard. So, um, but just to look under the hood of something that's pretty magnificent. Like these are the master speakers, the words of the masters. And then this gets us down to the dialogue practice. So now we get to the part where we get to use the language after doing our big studying. Uh, so everybody just repeat after me. You see it right here. Oh, let me get rid of the, hold on. This might make it a little bigger. How khuni? How khuni? How khuni? Ha. 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 Ye yi kuwat. Ye yi kuwat. Ye yi kuwat awa. Yeah, <laughs> Khadakhash. 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 Dasa ikhash. Dasa ikhash. Dasa ikhash. Dasa ikhash. Khadakhash. 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 At ishi kakwakan. At ishi kakwakan. At ishi kakwakan. At ishi kakwakan. Okay, now let's go through the things you need to know. <clears throat> this word works well for a greeting. It's also this word how. It's also used in storytelling to just sort of create a pause between some things. Uh, this is a kinship term. I do believe long time ago you used it mostly with people from the same moiety as you. Raven to raven, eagle to eagle, crow to crow, wolf to wolf. But I think it works well nowadays for like pal. Hey friend, you know. Uh, ye ye kuwat. For a long time, uh, I had not seen you. So this is a negative verb. 
but then it also gets this in to say it's not like that anymore. So it's a combination of both a negative and what we call a decessive to say it used to be like that, but not anymore. So you could also say like, I used to not know that, but now I do. Uh, so it's kind of a double negative, kind of fun. This one is important, so we are going to use this phrase in this chapter. It was written by the Dauenhauers years ago, and other people have used it probably before that. If you just said this to someone on its own, depending on the tone of voice and situation, you could be saying, what's the matter with you? So just keep that in mind. Dasayeda um, ine is a phrase that means what are, it translates to what are you working on and is often a safer phrase to use than wasaki uh, But if you're two good friends or something and you're on the phone and you can't see what they're doing, this is more like what are you, what are you doing? And so it just depends on context. So just be careful. Uh, with this one because it could mean what's the matter with you but you can also use it for you know you got like a kid that you're in charge of or is your kid or you're teaching them and they're just kind of misbehaving what's what are you doing you know that's wrong right uh, so let's see here what do we have here what this one, you'll notice that the D is in the classifier here, but not here. What is happening is this D component in the classifier turns on to kick the object out of there. So you could say, Chachash, I'm cutting it. A log, uh, a fish, something. But if you just said, if you say, Chachash, I'm cutting. So then, you know, what it does is it puts the focus on the action as opposed to the item. But then to ask like, well, what are you cutting? Then it switches back to the, the, the D gets booted out of there because you can only, you know, it kicks the object out. So when the object is there, the D isn't there. There's a few verbs that do this, right? Is it just a few or is that kind of a general thing like singing, let's say? Do they have a plus D? No, no, that's a really good question. So the, the ones that do that, there's one of two things that usually happens. There's a set of them, and I'll have to maybe put some of them together, but we're going to actually go through a whole bunch of verbs, and you'll see which ones are doing it. Because this one, it's kicking the objects out of a bunch of verbs that have a version with the object in there. There's a couple of them where there's just, the, you can add the object or remove it, and the verb doesn't change. And that gets a little confusing sometimes. Uh, like that's for something to be dirty. It's dirty. They got it dirty. So that one, it gets, it gets kind of hard to tell. But a lot of them, the, this D will pop in there, sewing, cutting, uh, reading, or counting. You know, and so that would be the big difference. It's like, what are you doing? I'm sewing. Or what are you doing? I'm sewing this jacket, right? The other way that it happens is they'll put ut in there, for they'll put something. So you could say, ha ha, I'm eating it. At ha, I'm eating. Right, and so then it just, it does the same thing where the focus goes on the action instead of uh, including like something, right? So there's a difference there, like the verb, ha, ha. You're saying, eat it, right? You know, like you, let's say we're at a ku'ig, and you don't understand like the cultural behaviors at a ku'ik and someone gives you this wonderful fish head, but you don't eat fish heads. And so you take it and you're not sure what to do. And I'll say, ha, eat it. You know, you don't want to get in trouble. Uh, you know, but if I said, atcha, that just means eat something, eat. You know, because maybe, maybe I know you're hungry, right? Atcha, go eat. The last one here is uh, is a noun, and this verb means specifically to smoke fish. 
So this wouldn't work for smoking your moose meat, smoking a hide, smoking a brisket or whatever else you might be smoking, uh, and like cigarettes or whatever else. But this one is only for smoking fish. And that's where atkan hiti comes from and atkan ani. Uh, okay, so let me answer in the chat. Let's see what else did I need to put in there? So ha ha is I'm eating it, and atcha, atcha ha, I'm eating. So it's the at that does it, and same with singing. So if you'd say uh, awashi, they they sang it. At wushi, they sang. So it's, it does the same thing where the at pops in there. There are a couple of them. Uh, gosh, I, got, I have to put together a list of these now. There are a couple of them where if you put at in there, it changes the meaning. So one of them, you would expect like, so if you say, uh, I, I drank it. But if you said, and you're trying to use the same rule that eating has. You might accidentally say, I was out drinking last night, because that means drinking alcohol. And that's just how that one works. Um, like there's another one. You could say, I'm hungry. Hunger arrived to me. You could also say, Sleep arrived to me. I'm sleepy. And you could also say, Ach eat at uwaha, where you're saying, something has arrived to me. And now you're, you're letting your, your partner know that uh, you're looking for action. So it's like saying you're horny, basically. So some of them, you just got to remember which ones put it into a special category which you know we gotta learn how to say all the things under consensual situations okay good questions so back to the dialogue uh let's see by my count there are 10 of us and i would like us all to do the dialogue so let's take turns being person a and person b and uh, let's just run through it a few times just Say it with a little emotion. Try and think about the fluency, the cadence, the vowels. Who wants to go first? I will. Okay. You want to be A or B? How? Oh, wait, we got to get a B first. We need an A. Uh, had I. Oh. Uh, had I. Oh. I could be B. Okay, I think we have an A and a B. Cook. How funny. How ye ye kuat awe tlis exati exatinen. Wasa kinu. Oh. Hada hash. Ah, dasa i hash. Hada hash. At Hishi Kokwahan. You care, Hawi. Riveting performances. Sheesh. We need a new A and a new B. Yeah, I did. Ah, I can be. And a B. Cook. How cune? Ah, ye, ye coo what away. Lech e was a teen. Was a keenuk. Had a hash. Dasa ich ash. Had a hash. A ish ish kipok on. Eh. Gonna cheese. Kahook eh. At the ya. Ah. Be 
هي خاصة تي اه الشيش كوك هاو خوني ها يي كوات اوي تل اقستينن وسقي قينوك خدا خاش داسا اي خاش خط خاش اتك ايشي كوك ان Hey, it's cheese. Uh, feel free to mail all the atrishi to my university address. I'll be happy to receive it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, anybody left? No bar. and I will go next. Okay, good. How, honey? Ha. Yay, you go what away? on. Okay, Hawi. Good cheese. Kahanak wook A. Am I B? Is it my turn? I'll be B. B. Hat Gorsati. Cook. How honey. Ha. Ye co what away Kasher Satinen. Wasaki nook. Had a hash. Dasa i hash. Had ha hash. Ad e she kakuan. Jack a gun cheese you han. Yes. Okay. A uh, couple of things to watch for when have we question. have. What's that? Ooh. No question. Okay. On the second line where it says ha, the pinched part. Is it normal, like, do some dialects kind of put, like, a harder pinch where it almost sounds like a T? Because my aunties and um, some of my grandmas over in Angoon, like, for Hachqua, it sounds like there's a T at the end with the pinch. Is that from that? Yeah, it, it's probably the way the, the throat is closing. It's probably actually producing a bit of a consonant. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Because, yeah, you'll hear some people say, ha, and it's actually, like, probably that little puff of breath that that comes up from closing it because it's also at the end of a word. Uh, so usually this is, there's only a few places where it's at the end of the word. So ha, that's how you say like surprise, like wow. And then also, um, oh, I like this kind of dark cinematic look that I've got going on here. Feels like I just got creepy. Okay, no, I'm not. Okay. Oh, come on after the break. But um, ja, that's another one. Ah, ja, for like my my spouse, my sweetheart. Um, so then we do mark that with the apostrophe. So that's one case where like we had to like think of something else because if you put a period there, people wouldn't know if that's the last word in the sentence. Uh, and so yeah, I think it's pretty common. For folks to have a bit of a sound there and, th and that could be sort of like natural just the way their their things go in their mouth and throat uh, it could also be something that sort of people knew that they heard a closing sound on there and then that sort of morphed into that and it could also be a dialect thing good question so before we take our break when we see this ilhsa, we got to make sure we're not adding one extra vowel in there. It's very common for us to want to go ikhwasa, to have a wa wa, have some sort of a or u sound, usually right there. But if we just look at these three letters, you get khus, like that's the sound that's right there. So there's a vocal cord here, i, then it doesn't come back on until the a. Ech satin, ech satin. 
very common for, you know, because we know that there's a perfective marker there, but that vowel can get knocked right out of there from the contraction that's going on. The other thing is just make sure when we see an X without the underline, we're not going but we're going that scrapey sound as opposed to the snorey sound. Any other questions about this dialogue? Kune, could I say, um, I know you, you don't use plural like if it's just a few, so if I do an email to a team of seven people or something, would you, would you just say, ach, khuni, or would you put it in a plural form? I pluralize that one. You would, okay. I'd say, ach, And yeah, we can... Kinship plurals are pretty fun. Most of them are hus. You just put a hus at the end and you've got it. Ach kla, ach kla hus. Ach ish, ach ish hus. Ach hilk, ach hilk o hus. But there are a couple of exceptions. Uh, one is children, because that one's actually a noun. It's not a kinship term, which is really interesting. Like. I don't know, you could come up with all your theories or whatever, uh, but yet would be the unpossessed noun form, but we never use that one. So you say, ach, yedi, and we know that it gets a possessive suffix on there because the plural, plural is yetki, because the order goes uh, diminutive or uh, small or many, and then the possessive marker. Uh, and then khunki, that one gets a plural marker on it, which is really interesting. Because khunki, khuni, and kani get yan. A khunki yan, a khani yan. They might be the a khunki yan. That one too gets both of them. Uh, and that yan has something to do with being like little and cute. It's another one of these endearing things. I think people think we're so tough, but we make everything cute. No, <laughs> but I wouldn't use that like if I, because I use, I mean, as you know, in my emails always say, hi, friends, or, you know, so if I started to change my emails with some tlingit, then I wouldn't put the yun. I would just say, ach, Yeah, I'd probably say, wasah uh, Like that would be the, the most abbreviated way. Okay, wasa is like saying, it's like when you go to Hawaii and they say, how's it? And it doesn't require an answer. It's just saying hi. Wasa is, I think, a way that Tlingit people say hi. But, you know, for a long time, I'd always want to answer that question because it's not even a question. And they'll say, wasa way when they see you, right? And they're just saying, what's up? Okay, let's take a break. Uh, Come back in, uh, I don't know, about five or six minutes, and we'll kick it back up. I'm going to turn the lights on. Try. Okay. So now we're going to get into this chapter, uh, conjugating Tlingit verbs. And we're going to start with this slow roll, focus just on the subject. That's where we start. So the ways you could change a verb is for person, who's doing it, to whom is it happening. Those are really big concepts, right? And they're built right into the verb. Object, subject, object, subject, object, subject. Always in that order. Then there's mode, where we start sort of saying like future, perfective, imperfective, and all about the quality of the verb and what might be happening. And then you could start linking things together, where you say, yak e ikhsatini, right? And then, and then there's different ways you can sort of do that. But those, those are kind of the three main things that you end up doing to change a verb. And so we're going to go through and look at first, second, third, all singular. And just remember, the third person is always unmarked. Always. I do it, you do it, does it. I do it, you do it, does it. I do it, you do it, does it. There's never anything there for the subject, for the third person. 
So starting with this, so you can see the translation here, and we're going to go third person, second person, first person, third person, second person, first person. I don't know what I'm doing with my fingers, but and then, but you'll see, like as we go through these, look at how the verb changes, right? Oops. Uh, so you got tuanuk, piyanuk, tuchanuk, and just there's like as we start to sort of you know, there's a couple things we do with this chapter. One is we learn a new verb. Two is we start to identify what the patterns are doing. And we're going to go zero e ha, zero e ha. That's what we're changing for all of these, is the subject. So we'll just go through them. I'll, we'll say them each um, twice and then just ask questions if you have any. Wasakhu wanuk. Wasakuanuk Wasakuanuk Wasakianuk 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 Wasakuanuk 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 Okay, so that's the doing. Like, what are you doing? Here's sitting. So I'm looking at the theme, subject, zero group classifier. Ah, uh, it, it wants to stay. This one's just going to be long and high every time. And then this number one means there's some other ah uh, verb root that means something different. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, e ah, uh, e ah, uh, e ah, uh, e ah, uh, ha ah, uh, ha ah, uh, ha ah, uh, ha ah. Uh. Hun, 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 e hun, e hun. E hun, e hun, ha hun, ha hun, ha hun, ha hun. So this one, if we look at this, subject zero, ah, uh, subject zero, hun. This X right there means that stem will never change. It's always going to be hun. And what gets wild is like to say hun. They are standing. So there is a subject there, but it's just, it's always unmarked. So if you go over here, you'll see sometimes you have zero, multiple zeros. This one, zero subject, zero classifier, hun. So this is a case where you've got a verb, but it's really only the stem. That's all, you, that's all you're saying and hearing. Kune, oh. is, that, is that X like, um, like I know that, is it the tilde or whatever where it's the the wiggle wiggly sign that means that you are going to have stem variation right and then the x means it's and then if there's nothing that's the same thing as an x Hold in on. the dictionary yeah let me let me pull this up so we can see one second so the question here is regarding how things are marked in the Edwards database and in the Clinkit verb dictionary by, well, Kerry Eggleston, right? So this is Kerry Eggleston's work. So if you go down to a verb like hun, which we just looked at, so here you'll see it as han written. We look them up long and low. That's just when, when we go to look up a verb root, we look it up long and low. So we're going to go through and we're going to find this one. And so as we look at these two verbs, so here's, uh, for example, to stand up, like when you'd say, get the han, right? You're telling one person to stand up. So she uses this tilde to say, this verb stem is variable. It can move between long and high, long and low, short and high. What doing work with James Crippen and Seth Cable, 
they sort of analyzed all the verbs, they said almost all of them change. So instead of marking the ones that change, because if you don't see the tilde, that means it doesn't change. So what they propose, and what I, I agree with, is you mark them, mark the ones that don't change. Because 99% of them change, meaning the vowel. The vowel moves around between length and tone. And so that's one of the differences between uh, how it's being written um, by some of us today, and then others are still using this method here. That's a great question. Okay, so that was sitting, standing. And these, these are two verbs. These are called positional verbs, and they're, there's only imperfective. So if you're going to say going to stand, didn't stand, you would switch it to a different verb. Okay, eating. So here's one with the ut. That ut pops up, locks up the object spot. Atcha. Atcha. At icha. At icha. At chacha. At chacha. So again, it shows you right here. Uh, this equal sign means it's attached to something, right? So this is here, but it's part of the verb. That's what it's saying. It's like same with when you see possessive things. Here's a possessive marker with the equal saying it's connected to this other thing. Then you've got ha, zero, ha. I, zero, ha. Zero, zero, ha. So I plus zero gets you E. It makes it longer. Okay. Drinking. At dana. At dana. At idena. At idena. At chadena. At chadena. Sipping, especially like hot liquids like tea or coffee. At chuk. At chuk. At ishuk. At ishuk. At chashuk. At chashuk. Picking. Uh, this well, this is picking berries into a container, but this would also work. The same verb. Uh, without, if you change it from ut to just a regular third person, uh, this would work also for like gathering clams, it would work for gathering medicines. It, it's really just sort of a gathering verb, but it, it comes from putting something into a container. At in. At in. At in. At e in. At ha in. At ha in. So you see, and these ones are long and low. So we're also just sort of looking at that as well. Uh, some of these we're just going to have to remember what what it does. So this is uh, we're going to look at two ways for cooking. So there's cooking to eat right away or cooking for the self. So there is a way, like this is, this is a prefix that pops up to say doing this for my own self. So there is a way to say, uh, I don't think it's really rude either. Like someone's like, what are you cooking? And you say, I'm cooking ramen for myself, which means like, this isn't for everybody, you know, but you can just pack it all right in there with this one sort of prefix. But there's a lot of times for cooking this is used to say like 
we'll eat it right away. Like it, it's something I, I don't fully understand the difference between this one, which is it's always been interesting to me. At kasi, at kasi, at kisi, at kisi. At kahas e at kahas e and now just cooking at sa e at sa e at isa e at isa e at khasai at khasai any questions thoughts so here's the cutting right so this this is one of those ones where the classifier adds the d and then that kicks the object out of there so this is just cutting right Dahash Dahash Idahash Idahash Hadahash Hadahash Sweeping this one gets the KW, uh, and there's some of them that get this repetitive suffix because Klingit looks at it as a, a single act, but it's made up of these tiny sort of motions. Like it's like so that's when the sometimes this KW or other types of repetitive suffix will be on there to say it's something that happens, but it's a bunch of little things that make up one bigger sort of concept. The hit. The hit it the hit it the hit had the hit had the hit so that's sweeping I have to say it is great watching your mouth <laughs> being able to see you. <laughs> Announcing. <laughs> I was like, yay, a language class where we get to see your, 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 your it helps to pronounce. Yeah, bring on the post COVID days already. Just a classroom and face to face and just. Anyways, it's going to happen. We'll get back to it. But yeah, cheesh. So here's another one, that same KW, because if you think of sweeping, then you think of washing, it also involves these kind of small rapid movements, right? So we just start looking for patterns and things to identify. And I think it is just always, it's like, it's just got a million different categories and little different things to sort of note all these different things going on. Uh, they are washing. So with both of these, you do get an ejective. So this is t. So you get t and t. Which is pretty wild because it, it is a challenge, I think, to make this very hard consonant and then have this kind of softer ending at the there. So those are good things to just practice, right? To be getting to there and hit so that it's kind of popping on just right after. Hune, uh, can I ask back on the washing um, the one we just did? When I was trying to learn about the five different stem variations, 
it said that when you have that dot, like the dot OOS, that it acts as a consonant. So does that mean that would be a CVVC, or is that a, like, is that how you treat that dot, or not really? I wouldn't. Okay. Uh, but w whether there's a consonant at the beginning is not as important as the end. That's really the important part, right? So, because if you have ah, that's open. But if you have ah or ah, that's closed. And so it doesn't, for me, it doesn't really matter, uh, except for like, when do you write it and when do you not? And, and so, uh, but it does affect it in that you have to have that closed, you have to have that glottal there for like, like if you have, um, you couldn't really have it where there's nothing there. Uh, like if you had a zero, you could have a zero classifier there, but for the third person, it would now have a. Uh, so you'd say, uh, usk, they're washing it. Uh, and you'd say, I usk, you're washing it. Ha usk, I'm washing it. Right. Good question. Is it. Um fairly common for if the verb itself is high tone, if the stem is high tone, that it's long and high and it goes to short and high when it? That's, a, that's another really good question. So when we get to perfective and future, the really nice thing about those is the stem variation is absolutely predictable. It's so predictable. These are all imperfectives. And the reason they're all imperfectives is so that when you learn the subject, you don't have to have a perfective marker, future markers. It's just sort of, it's minimizing what's in the prefix is when they put this together. But the imperfectives have unpredictable stem variation. So this is just something and until we, we know that there's like, you know, we haven't found a pattern to it yet, as far as I know. Uh, I think Zeosh had it down to 24 something possibilities and I'm like, God, I don't even know. Um, and so this is something where you just sort of have to look at it. Uh, this one is short and high. Uh, this one is long. And so it might have something to do with that suffix on there. That's a really good theory. I have to go through and look at some others. Okay, but here's one with the suffix that's long and high. So I, you know, it's one of those, we don't know, questions. Okay, it only took us, it only took us 90 some minutes to get to the nobody knows section of the language, at least as far as I know. Uh, so what about this suffix? Can anybody tell me what this one is? This S apostrophe? We might have talked about it, I don't remember. There's a little note in series. That's right. So this notes that something happens in a pattern, right? So it's not just repetitive. It's like a pattern. So you'll see this one. It's sewing is a great example because it's the stitch, stitch, stitch. It's all those same little stitches. And so you'll see it uh, in a few other ones, but it's where it's like it's something that happens in a definitive repeating pattern. And so in this case, it pops up here. But what, what's kind of interesting is if you move this into future or perfective, that goes away. Same with this one. So, you, you know, so you'd say, uh, for example, you'd say, but you'd say, now you move it back to, or yeah, I washed, I was washing it. Okay, they are sewing, not it. They are just sewing. The case, the case, the other way. It the case, it the case, had the case, had the case. Okay, hold on. Okay. 
So we'll pick up on this chapter probably on Thursday. Maybe going quickly through what we just did and then sort of getting us back to here. And, and there is a set of really useful verbs. What we're really looking at too is this nothing e ha e ha e ha and that's what we're we're really practicing that and starting to sort of look at the prefix and see what happens when we start changing that subject but i do want to spend a few minutes on qarqawu and also talk about what is going on uh, with our clinket language website now in terms of uh, finally getting some updates on there for the semester and getting us ready to um, to start using that. So let's see. So going back to, oops, that's not the right one. So I, there's a bunch of stuff still up here for like resources, just so that they're handy. Uh, the beginning Klinget workbook, the the dictionary, the verb dictionary, uh, the verb database, how reference guide. Those might be some things that are neat. Um, the Klinget stem list, verb notes, verbal structure handbook. Uh, let's see. This is a collection of the Dauenhauer materials. These are Klinget videos, and there's a bunch of them in there. We're going to watch one. I don't, I don't know if we'll do it Thursday. We might wait till maybe we will. We'll see. Uh, and this is Klinget written. I'll have to see what that is. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so then there's here's the curriculum folder. It has all the stuff in it. Uh, Klinget verbs, verb notes. These are big giant list of nouns uh, and then here's our class from last week which I finally put up today so here's the Natla text that we went over here's the audio I think you should be able to download the mp3 right here uh, here's Karkawu these are this is the Elan software. What I'd like you folks to try out between now and Thursday is downloading Elan to your computer. And then here's, here's the trickiest part, maybe of the whole thing. I don't know. So try and install it. And then these three files, when you click on them, they should download. But you'll need all three of these in the same folder. What's it sound like a one minute timer? So you'll need all of these in the same folder. And then you should be able to just open this EAF file, and then it should link itself right to the video and the audio. But Thursday will be troubleshoot day, uh, and then we're gonna, I'm going to give you the weekend. We're going to try and do like maybe 30 seconds or maybe a minute. We'll see kind of how we're feeling. Uh, okay, so that does get us to... Elon, which I've got to make sure I've got it open. I didn't. Okay. So now sound and okay I think we're right here all the zoom controls are in my way now so they could hear it. I think we left off there. So I wrote it. Uh, a couple things. This is a plural. 
It's, it's both a plural possessive pronoun and a plural kinship term. So, chichk is a grandparent, chichk uhas. One of the things that you'll notice is when you put something on there like this, sometimes that's gonna t it's gonna activate the vowel. It just it's gotta turn into a vowel to make it easier to get to the next sound. So you get you go from chichk to chichk uhas. So a little vowel pops up in there. The other thing is we have the possessed form of shkashnik, which is a story. And then you get shkashniki. The other thing, this is something I used to do, is I used to say stuff like has du shishku has du shkashniki. But you don't need that has du. You just need has du shishku has shkashniki. Just like you could say, has du ish shkashniki. You don't need to say, has du ish du shkashniki. Okay, so like that second pronoun doesn't need to be there. Who wants to translate this for us? Hataya. Ah. Um, are grandparents stories? But that's why we might want to look at that has to, because it would be hashik o has It's a little bit different. There, there, Grim. Yep, yeah, well. Kind of cheesh. So uh, the other thing that we can do with this software is there is this grid button here so if I press grid and then it says select a tier uh, so what I'm going to select here is utterance and I can also let's see or maybe text utterance I think it's grid And then I can change the font size to make it bigger. So this is kind of handy so I could sort of look back and see kind of what was before it. So then we have, I feel, I feel thankful today. Our grandchildren led me here by the hand so they could hear it, their grandparents' stories. Or you could also say the stories of their grandparents. So sometimes I might do a little word order thing, just sort of like, um, So a lot of times as, as I'm translating, I'll look back through and then sort of work on punctuation and some other stuff as I start to realize like where the end of the sentence is. Okay, so we're gonna jump ahead to this next so we can see where the phrase is. We're just gonna highlight just the phrase itself. That was pretty easy. Oops. And then there's a bit of a gap here. I'm probably going to guess that he's going to say I'm thankful for something. And so that's one where you could go down here and say thank you. Uh, or you could jump ahead and say, well, what does he say next? You folks, and just to, let me know if you want to hear it again. Ach, ach, I heard CT at the end. Uh, ach, to uh, Slatinich or Slatzinich. Mm. 
Hussity. Look at that. Teamwork. Go team. So by doing this work too, like you really start to like, it helps out with like word separation and like, because it all runs together a lot of times if you think it, right? So now uh, we'll go to the next one, then we'll come back and figure out where the punctuation might be. How are we going to translate this? I was thinking, I feel strong. To woo, ach to woo, I feel. And tsetsi nich. Have strength. Like, and the underline X means repeatedly or ongoing. I have. Uh, we have the city verb, which is to be something. And then we're going to look back for this underline X to say that's the thing it's being. And then we're going to also look at this with the A classifier that has become a noun. So like klitzin is they are strong. Klitzin is strength. Du tu wu klitzin, or if you say ach tu wu klitzin with an I, I feel brave. I feel I have courage. Ach tu wu klitzin. With an A, now that has become a noun, which is a little bit tricky. How are we gonna, you know, as we sort of see these things happening, we, we sort of like, hmm, well, what, how's that work now? Uh, is it I have courage or Ganesh Chish for my courage? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so you could say there, there's some different ways that you could say like I'm thankful that I have, have that I'm feeling brave, but this is doing something a little bit different. And so the hussity, and so the the other thing is like thing it tends to front load. So like when some, it's, it's sort of like it installs something as the thing we're talking about. If we go back through, I feel thankful today. Our grandchildren led me here by the hand so they could hear it, the stories of their grandparents. Thank you. So the, who's the hus? Who's the they? Who them husses? The you grandchildren? Think? It's the grandchildren. And they are something. What are they? Is a this is a wonderful phrase. I felt so good to hear. Do you want the answer? We're out of time. They are his. They are his strength of mind. That's what I would say. They like literally. They are my courage. Wow. And it's important because you know we we ask them to tell this story. He was nervous about telling the story because he's talking about his father's people. And, you know, it's always a bit of a, you're getting out to the edge of the boundary of, of what's appropriate. But if you know it and you can tell it, then you could tell it. But so it's not, what's that? So like on a word by word basis, it could be like my feelings of strength they are? Yeah. And then, and so like, to wu shitsin on its own is the word for courage, like as a noun. Just like kletsin is strength as a noun. Ach tu wu shitsin That's like a very big compliment from a big important person. So if, when, when you all get real old, you want to compliment those little grandbabies for just Helping you do it, you can say something like that. He was talking about us. He was talking about us, and we're in the room, and you know, and he's getting ready to do this 
amazing thing. He was 92. He could tell wonderful stories, and he said, nobody ever recorded me telling these in Klinge. So it was what you see here, too, and as we get through this, it's a big story, but as we get through it, we see there's a whole setup to the story. Like he's got to say this stuff before he even gets into it. Uh, this is the big stuff. So if it's hard, don't don't worry. We're going through it together. There's lots of stuff we'll come back to. But when you folks, by the time we're done with this, when you folks hear this story, you get you're in the the MVP copper group. Like not very many people could listen to stuff and know what's going on. But you folks are you're being indoctrinated into that. Copper status. Okay, Lachish, I have a quick, I have a quick question about this, um, Elon. Yeah. Um, I tried to download this and I I found the video in your Google, um, but as a .mov, and I started doing some of this, but I kept losing the wave files. Like oh. I would be in the middle of something and then it would they would just disappear, and if I, um closed like saved and closed it and brought it back again they would eventually come back but if i were to do those three separate files instead of the dot mov would that fix that it should fix it and the trick really is you have to add the wave file first okay because if you had the movie file first and it's just a matter of which one you click first for whatever it's kind of a buggy program i mean it's wonderful but it has just these little kind of quirks sometimes. And they keep sort of fixing it and it's getting better and better and better and better. Uh, but the other thing is if you have kind of an older computer, once you get past like the 20 minute mark, it, the video might start dropping out and uh, like all kinds of weird stuff starts to happen. Uh, but yeah, if these things are disappearing, it might be because the WAV file is not there first. And if you had some big project you're working on, you could, Go into linked files. I'm going. Oh, yeah. And remove them, and then, then re-add them and put the wave file first. But you should. So between now and Thursday, and don't don't get mad. Like if it's not working, don't worry. We'll trouble we'll have troubleshooting Thursday, and we'll see what might be going on. But try to download those three files. Uh, you don't have to do anything on your own yet. If you want to just go ahead and take some practice, go for it. We're almost at the one minute mark, which means we're almost one thirtieth of the way done. I was, um, I just started with it and got it all working. Uh, and I couldn't figure out how to enter in the translation. Okay. Okay, we're using the files that you download. You should be able to highlight some text, uh, listen to it. And then you go down, kind of got to go down in the lower part. There's a couple ways you can right click and select new annotation here. Okay. Or you can double, oops, it doesn't work great all the time but you should be able to double click i can't do it fast enough i don't know uh, it's a little buggy but when you double click that's another way and then you mm. enter something here and then it's already the same length underneath it because they're linked to each other and i uh, can show you folks how to build one of these from scratch uh we might do that on thursday it's it's a wonderful program you could do so much with it but there are a few things that you got to sort of just pick up, you know, things that'll make it go faster too. And there's some people who are way better at this than me. They go through and they're, they're just, but it speeds up the translation process, which is very difficult for those who did this with cassette tapes and pen and paper back in the day or reel to reels. It's wild. So um, I just wanted to clarify. So we're each going to have be working on our own. There won't, it won't be like building all on one. Yeah, so you'll each download it, be working on it, and then we'll go through together and we'll see what you folks came up with. And then we'll go through and have you sort of 
enter it in the chat because it's also not a program where we can all collaborate onto one document, which would be really fun. But for now, I'll just say like, drop it in the chat, you know, so copy and paste and, and we'll go through. And then some of it will just do it sort of live. But this is one of our goals is to try and get through this whole thing in the semester. And so uh, there might be times when we're getting near the end feeling more confident. I might say, okay, you take this minute, you take that minute, you take, and so we'll do 10 minutes at a time by dividing up that work. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I was also going to say, I, my computer's kind of old, so that might be the problem, but like I got a little over a minute in and then it froze on me and I lost everything. So I would recommend that you save often. Yes, yes. So it's, and you just hit that command save or control S, whatever the thing is. But yes, that's another thing is uh, there's a, probably been countless hours that are just gone now from people doing a bunch of work. And uh, yeah, but everybody's had their uh, opportunities to swear at this software. But it, I think <laughs> its benefits outweigh those things like tremendously. But yeah, there's we, we've had whole classes on this where Students are like, I don't know what to do. And so don't worry, we'll go nice and, so, but yeah, test drive it, make sure you can install the software, try it out, try this, well, I'll work on this single video and then we'll start talking about midterm and final projects where maybe you take a short one and do it on your own. I don't know. We'll see if we're, we'll see if we're feeling ready. I like to challenge, but I don't want to discourage, so. I always got to find that edge of the knife blade. Okay, Mr. Cheese, Shuhan. Cheese. 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 Can I ask a quick question? Just, just to see. I'm. It's for the uh, field indigenous uh, field methods course. And you assigned an article from last year on the digital language shell in that's from Charles Darwin University. And I just didn't know if you, you're so well connected to the global network. I just didn't know if you had any connections there because I'm trying to use it as an example because EDA wants us to pick a, a project where there was a university involved. And I really love that, and I'm still really interested, especially if I do a practicum with you and Ida, like how I could set up a digital shell to support the work you're doing for the evening classes, and maybe have one for kids, but like another layer for adults that have like a little grammar thing or something like that. And they did something like this, and they even had like a story that they just did a shell of that you talked about. And I got on there back in November when you assigned the um, last year, gosh, so a year ago, or last spring, last spring you taught the class. And I got on and it was awesome and now I can't get on it. It's, and I've emailed the person who's in charge of the shell. She never responded, never responded. And then I Googled her and she died of a heart attack in, in December of 2021. So I'm trying to contact Charles Darwin, but I just thought, gosh, you know, I'll check with you to see, because it, it has four pilot lessons that are really well built. They, they worked with the indigenous community collectively on how they were going to do it. And then they also surveyed them about what was the best part of this digital shell. And like they had little videos, like, I was thinking of your hunting video, like, you know, having just one little teaser or something that connects you to the culture, but also to the language. And um, anyway, I just thought I'd ask you to see if you had any connections with it. 